Hey guys, True Grit Scott, Bulletproof Saws and BlueSaws.com. I'm getting into the frame, don't worry, I'll be in there. Taking a little sip of my drink because it's, again, 90 degrees out with 90% humidity and I'm dying. Anyhow, I uh, finished up this, this uh, 572, reset the auto tune. Uh, that's a nice running saw. I mean, I like it a lot. So what I wanted to do was do a very unfair comparison of a super nice saw. I I haven't done much research on the 572 and I'm not overly familiar with it. You guys know I do older saws, mostly in clone saws. But uh so I haven't read all the forums with people love them, people hate them and all that kind of stuff, but I'm going to tell you what, that that's a nice running saw. That 20 inch bar seems too small for that saw. I think that would be pair up really nice with the 24 and spin it like crazy, but I had a 20 to throw on it to test it. So anyhow, I reset the auto tune. I took a cut, felt really nice to me. So I wanted to run it again on this piece of red oak. And I had that brand new 366 that had the, the muff mod, the base gasket delete, the couple other little things for runnability, not really performance, more runnability. And uh, I wanted to run the two of them together. This is not fair. So we're still using the same old crappy chains that we were using last week. And we've cut some wood since then. Well, not on that one. So I figured I'd run them both. And it's interesting for me because I could run them and I could see how they feel. And listen, that saw's a f tremendous saw. This saw's a really nice saw too. They're different. I mean, you got a 59cc saw and a 72cc saw, an auto tune versus an old, you know, 361 clone. So I just thought it would be neat to run the two of them together and then I can see on video, hey, is that 10 seconds faster? Is it 20 seconds? You know, I, I don't know. I know it's going to be faster <laughs> without a doubt. What I have to do is I have to port one of these up and it's still not going to beat that. And you put a big bar on it, and it's definitely not going to beat that. But it's funny. The saw, the orange 361 that, you know, I almost said that I gave to, to Ralph over at Timber and Tools. I didn't give it to Ralph. He stole it from me. He took the saw, is using it at his job, and it's my saw. <laughs> so I want to be clear about that. Timber and Tools stole my saw. And I want it back. <laughs> Anyhow, he didn't really steal it. He borrowed it. But then again, I've had his 346 for quite a while. So, but he's using mine for work. So it's different. His is sitting in a box. He's using mine on to make money. I should get a cut of that, right? Anyhow, guys, I, I ran these saws a little while ago. And then I went up and got a drink. So I'm going to start them up. They should still be halfway warm just because it's so darn hot out. So I'm going to run the two of them again, and then I could look on the video and, you know, see how many seconds it took for the cuts. And that's all I'm trying to do. So it's not a fair comparison. For a thousand reasons, it's just something fun to do. And I like running this saw, and I figured after I reset the auto-tune, it would be nice to, you know, make a few more cuts with it and get it back to the fellow who owns it. Anyhow, let's see. If I could find... I'd like to look for some of these saws blown up on eBay or whoever's selling them. And if I could get these for a good deal, I would probably buy a couple of them to rebuild. Uh, I'm a sucker. I'll buy every saw to rebuild. If it's a pro saw, I guess I'm in. These addictions are hard to manage, guys. Oh. 
wood started rolling into me so uh it got me out of the wood for a second there guys and i'm hot and i'm tired but couldn't resist running them well let's see if this jerk's gonna start because you know it gave me a problem the other day and i didn't retune it really since then but whatever <laughs> because the little piece of wood moved on me, but it gives you an idea. I could bury the bars pretty well. It's red oak is fairly hard wood. I think the hickory we have around here, we got pig nut hickory and uh, shag bark hickory. And those two seem harder to me. And they, they almost seem abrasive to your chain. Like I, I feel like when I'm cutting hickory, my chain's dull, but uh, that's a whole nother story for another day. Anyhow, I just wanted to take a quick run to unfair to test together saws. But again, I think with the correct work and mods on these 366s, they're good saws. That's a phenomenal saw. I, I like that saw. And if any of you guys have one that's blown up that you're not going to dink with and it's in good condition, maybe we can work out a deal because I'd be real interested to get a couple of those to play with in it. It kind of, I have a 550 XP Mark II that I, I, I like a lot for a 50cc saw. I really like that saw. I think uh, I'd like to look into some more of these Husky. Uh, I think there's a, I think there's a 545 XP. Don't bet me on it. And I guess if you have a 550, why do you need a 545? Except I thought maybe that was a couple pounds lighter. And I'd heard bad things about the 550 XP Mark I. Like I heard that saw just throw it in the garbage from a lot of people. But then I get to talking to some other guys and they say, you know, if you get one to run and you put the work into it, that it's a heck of a saw. And that 550 XP Mark I is actually lighter than the Mark II, which is a weird thing saw manufacturers do. Even the, the steel 361 and even that one, is lighter than the 362 and to be honest with you i i don't think a 362 runs as good as a 361. some people love them a lot of people hate them i know uh greg my buddy greg chappie ported one up and he says it runs like a dream he loves it running it but it is a heavier saw anyhow guys i'm not gonna bore you to death talking about saws but it just makes you want to look at different models in the whole Husky lineup with some of these auto-tune saws. I, people are down on auto-tune. They hate it. It's electronic compute. I, I don't feel that way. You know, that saw took a hell of a hit, has been sitting for a while. I had to reset the auto-tune and it's not really my bag, but it's not that hard to reset the idle auto-tune and the high idle auto-tune. And it runs like a beast. And if I ported it up and did some changes, I don't have to adjust the carb. The computer does it for me, and that's kind of nice. You know, if I'm in the middle of the woods nowhere, I don't have a carb for that saw, just the same as I don't have a computer for that saw. I don't keep them in my pocket. So 
it's one of those things. The Husky dealers did frustrate with me with getting parts for this saw, like repeatedly frustrated me. And yeah, maybe I'm dealing with the wrong dealer. If they sell tractors and everything else, maybe, you know, saws aren't their big main concern. Maybe it's even a loss for them that they write off and they don't care about the saws. But even looking online, I wish I could find the parts. And, you know, we all know steel doesn't sell parts online. So that's another thing. But, you know, some of these old classic models, it's, it's, I have every part for them. I have a hundred of every part for them. So it's easy for me to deal with. Anyhow, guys, I won't bore you to death. Two Grit Scott, Bulletproof Saws and BlueSaws.com. Thanks for watching and stay safe, guys.